Okay, this drill here is from the summer camp that I did with pro goaltending. So the goalie that we're featuring right now is an NHL prospect playing in the uh, the Swiss National League, which is the top league in Switzerland. So this drill here simply for us is a zone 3 to zone 2 movement for the goaltender. So essentially the goaltender is moving from where they would receive zone entry on a zone three so it'd be zone entry um odd man rush anything like that where the goal would be lining up essentially with the player on the wing then moving down into zone two which was highlighted in the world junior video but the zone two is basically anywhere if you drew a straight line from the post to the hash mark down to the bottom of the circle so a lot of teams you know the players are getting forced on the wall uh, are going to start to take shooting opportunities here it used to be known as a funnel zone so a lot of players looking to create any kind of pass off pad play um really this zone should be an opportunistic area for the goalie uh, should be in favor of the goalie uh, to make the save the save percentage in this area should be high but why we started focusing on this is just to simplify the footwork and the positioning for the goaltender so if on the short side, or on either side of the net, right side or left side, if the goalie understands, can, for us, zone 3, zone 2, and then zone 1 being anything that would be a dead angle, zone 2 would be a bad angle, and zone 3 would be anywhere kind of higher in the zone, uh, basically the position of defenseman and a regular 5-on-5 five -five play, or most often time where the puck's being brought in kind of down the wall there outside of the dot lane. So we're just trying to simplify for the goalie certain markers, certain positioning on the ice to allow them to simplify their movement and ideally also simplify their mindset and understand, okay, if the pucks are in certain positions and then I kind of counter those positions based on footwork within the crease, I'm going to be in the most optimal spot to make the save, but I'm also going to minimize how much I'm going to have to move when following the puck. So here, goalie comes back from his zone three to his zone two, right? But what I also want to highlight here, so again, we're focusing on the overlap technique, but with pro goaltending and with their pro goalies, they've kind of effect, uh, developed three specific placements or footwork around going into the overlap. So being a pro goalie here, um, their feeling is that when the goalie goes into from zone three to zone two and it's a really quick play, sometimes you don't have the ability to take any ice back. So the goalie's coming back. Now, the goalie in the net right now is around six feet tall on a good day, if you catch my drift. So they're not a big goalie. Their footwork is excellent. But what they're able to do, because they can narrow on this, so they're going to be in what we would call perimeter footing or like a slightly narrower stance they're going to release forward on the shot so they're going to be in a position where they would ideally want to get to an overlap but they got caught just the way the attack happened and now here they got their foot on the post but they're going to be able to drop narrower and they're going to drop forward so they're going to be tighter in their foot position and what they're going to do is they're going to kind of drop down forward into the ice with their knees versus laterally with their feet as what we would traditionally do on a butterfly. So if this goalie were to kind of push laterally in a traditional butterfly being in this position, they're actually going to end up pushing themselves off the net and they're going to end up opening up this whole short side here. Right there, nice, narrow, tight butterfly. Great blocking save based on the position of the puck when it was released. Right, no daylight, able to make that save. Right, we got great eyes on the puck now and the rebound. They're going to be able to follow that out and track down that rebound. Okay. So now... This one here, as they're coming in, a little bit blurred, but we can see if you watch the goalie's foot, 
Now they got a little bit more time. So now as a professional goalie, being able to make snap judgments in the moment, he's going to be able to take a little bit of ice here, add a little bit of challenge here, and then he's going to be able to butterfly a little bit more traditionally and have a little bit more uh, room to make that save. All right, so you see that he bumped out. Clearly his foot is out in front of the post here, right? Excellent. Again, compact save, right? Giving up almost nothing to that shooter. The shooter is shooting from um, the faceoff dot in the neutral zone, which is relative based on the net position to where the faceoff dot would be uh, in, in the end zone or, or where the goalie would play traditionally. Again, nice edge work back, able to track that puck, come through, nice saves. So here we're going to go into, so the first two, the narrower butterfly is going to be more for the advanced goalie. That's something that they're going to see plays that are going to develop a lot quicker, um, you know, be able to make those assessments on the fly, uh, be able to narrow their butterfly. It's not something that you're going to be able to have a lot of success with young goalies with. Obviously, the more that you work on something with anybody, the better they can get at it. But be able to implement it in the game, you're going to need that um, tracking IQ in there as well. And that's obviously it's not going to be something that they're really going to develop in circuiting and probably until they start getting into U16. So this one here is just basically the movement back into the overlap. So we saw this in the World Junior video. Uh, the more reps you kind of get doing this, obviously the better the goalies get at it. What we want to identify here is again, the foot's just marginally past the post. So the skate itself is just past where that post would be. So it puts them in the overlap. So the overlap isn't getting the body way over here and then giving up this, this whole long side here to the shooter. Obviously what we're looking at too is our, our shooter is coming down on the off wing. So their primary shooting target would be over here on the far side. So anything in the middle for them or anything on the far side is going to be their primary area. They're going to have to rotate their body quite a bit in order to take a shot on the short side on a, on a quick play. Practice as we know things change based on uh, what the shooter is feeling that day. But when there's pressure, that, that shot's not going to be able to go short side. So as we're looking back, the goal of the drill is to bring the goalie from that kind of zone three. So the zone three would be kind of something that would be out in here. And then zone two would be what we're looking at here. So this here is uh, zone three, okay? And then and in here, this stuff here, that's zone two. So this is a bad angle, zone two, right? Zone three is at zone entry point, right? Odd man rush or where the D would be. So you're moving from a zone three into a zone two. As we're moving into the zone two with the younger goalies to get them into that spot where they're going to get the feeling for it, we want to bring them back to their post and let them bump out a bit. So that's kind of what our goalie did here. Comes back to the post. There's a slight bump there. Can drift just the slightest bit, take a little bit of ice, but now you can butterfly normally, so to speak. As they get good at this, you can start to allow them to kind of track into it. So like Thomas Millich did in, in the game film, he's able to track back from his zone three into his zone two without over moving beyond the post and then be able to go from that zone two footing, which is what our goalie is at right now, into zone one footing, which would consist of a dead angle. So anything below the bottom of the circle. So again, the zone three, two, one, that's just something that was made up. It's, it's not a universal language. It's just something that I use with my goalies to simplify so that they understand if I come and I have to talk to them quickly and I say, okay, in that zone three footing or you need to get into better zone two footing there, they're going to understand what I mean. They're going to understand the markers that they're looking for on the ice. Um, and this is something that 
we're introducing to our bantam age goalies or u13 and uh, or pardon me u14 and up so again here as we're moving back the as we're going through the developmental process we want the goalie to go from the zone three to the zone two kind of bump on that post so come right back to the post on angle here and then just drift out slightly to get the skate out in front into this overlap position that we have here allowing them to butterfly a little bit more naturally okay still relatively tighter butterfly here still blocking save more or less but you can see here glove moving so there's reactability here so it's a blocking save with a reactive mindset we're not going down into a hope save hoping we're in the right position and hoping that the puck hits us we're going to make sure it does and then just based on this goaltender here so He's elected to, because of his positioning, to kind of rotate out with that backside edge to drive back in, right? Only a single attacker. This is a professional goalie. So his movements in this drill are based on his reads that he's seeing now. We're going to throw a bunch of different scenarios at him so that he has the opportunity to work on different footing. Thomas Millich opted for a little bit different but similar footwork to get into the RVH, which we're seeing here from the overlap. So the overlap is a very simple save selection or stance. It allows the goalie to play the puck straight up as they would traditionally anywhere else on the ice. It doesn't get them low and locked in early, which is what goalies were tending to do quite a bit with the VH and the uh, RVH. The overlap theoretically has been around forever. Uh, it just was basically the way that goalies played um, that bad to dead angle before. But now we're looking at it from a more technical perspective. So we're wanting the goalies basically to engage in some kind of an overlap position once that puck gets into that zone two. Right. Nice and calm lets the puck come to them. Okay, here hits the post. Again, this is a little bit more advanced skating, more for your U16, AAA, and up goalies that have a little bit better grasp of the game. They're going to have to be narrow on this. All right, nice and narrow butterfly. Excellent stick save. Because of the nature of the drill, we're, we're going to let it progress. Obviously not a true rebound like we would have liked to see, but the goalie, because the puck placement for puck two, is going to have the ability to recover. All right. Excellent edge work. So really just focused on the one side here, but I, I just wanted to really go in depth with an opportunity here with a, with a pro goalie under a microscope and how they attack these things. A lot of pieces to dissect here. Um, you're seeing the goalie's eyes low. They have that head trajectory. You got their eyes over the puck. Excellent frame, the way his body's set up to accept the puck. Hands are symmetrical at uh, 9 and 3. Keep the shoulders balanced. Keep the upper body balanced. The stick is off the ice. Not important stick position when you're on your feet anymore. If you're identifying a, a shot that's going to go five hole, you're going to be dropping down tight to the ice. We want to make sure that our stick now, the stick blade, pardon me, the stick paddle, is going to be fit to the goalie's butterfly stance, not their up stance. If the goalie's going to handle the puck, they're going to be sliding their blocker up the shaft of the stick anyways. So again, the paddle length is irrelevant uh, for playing the puck at that point. Good balance. Goalie holds his edges until the shot's released. He's down with the shot. Reads low shot. Drops down. Uh, tries to trap and block. Primary objective is to neutralize the play on this shot. Secondary objective is to control the puck. Place it where you want. Good edge work allows you to adjust your position. 